Divid Investors, bonjour! Mike Yehu here, helping you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Today, we're talking about Brookfield Property Partners, mostly because I have received a bunch of questions in regards to their tender offer, and on top of that, they just released their quarterly earning this morning. So let's dig into the company first. So today, we're going to talk about the business model, and then I'll make the difference between all the different tickers that you can see, so BPY, BPYU, and BPY.UN.TO for Canadians. I'll share with you my complete investment thesis, why I bought my shares uh, a few months ago, back in June, actually. Uh, we're going to review the most recent quarter that was published this morning. And finally, I'm going to look into the tender offer where Brookfield is offering you 12 bucks US or roughly 15 bucks Canadian um, to buy back your shares. And should you say yes or should you keep your shares and write it all along? Uh, what's Brookfield Property Partner? Well, first, it's uh, basically a huge, huge um real estate business. 85% um, of its balance sheet is comprised of office properties and retail properties. Um, as you can see, those are astronomic numbers. We're talking about several, several millions of square feet. Uh, and they have also a limited partner uh, investment part, which is about 15% of their balance sheet, where their goal is to acquire and sell assets at a timely, uh, in a timely manner to flip profit and make more money um, developing some interesting uh, properties. What you see here is uh, data from 2019. So most of the balance sheet, most of their assets is retail or offices. You have a small portion, 16%, which are in LP investments. So we're talking about multifamily, hospitality, triple net lease, self-storage, all those like small properties that you can use for a retail REITs. Uh, now, you have this company that has assets all across the world, mostly in the US, as you can see, but still 14 billion in Asia, Pacific, 31 in Europe, 9 billion in Canada. Funny fact, this is a Canadian-based company, um, parent from Brookfield Asset Management. Uh, they manage uh, almost $200 billion of assets across 30 offices. So we're talking about some major business here. Uh, now, the difference between BPY and BPYU is BPY is a limited partnership, while BPU is a US REIT stock, so basically a corporation. Uh, the difference between both stocks is pretty much, it's the same thing in terms of units, same thing as in terms of distribution. So we're all talking about tax implication. So depending on where you live, depending on the type of account you invest, I cannot help you out with this, but what I can tell you is call your accountant, call your broker and ask them how those dividends are being um, considered in your account. If you're Canadian, you can also buy it under bpy.un.to, but please know that the distribution is paid in US dollar all the time. So if you look at the dividend payment graph and you're Canadian and Canadian dollars, you'll see that it's not always going up the same way as you look at it when it's in US dollars. Now, why I purchased the shares? Well, obviously the first thing is uh, BPY dropped in value greatly a few months ago with the COVID-19. The thing is, as you can imagine, there's a lot of risk involved because uh, there's a big portion of their assets are retail. Uh, so when you think about all the brick and mortars, it's not doing super good for retailers. We have lots of bankruptcies in the past few years and it's, it get even worse when they're fo forced to close down. However, the company is backed by Brookfield Asset Management. They have over 40 billions in liquidity and they have made clear that they're gonna keep on going it. Well, most of the dividend paid by Brookfield Property Partner is actually paid to Brookfield Asset Management. So in the end, when you're buying shares of BPY, you're pretty much um, get in line with Brookfield Asset Management at the same time. The business has been there for over 100 years. They have a long track record. They're well diversified in terms of properties and in terms of uh, countries as well. And what I really like about them is that they own premium assets. Um, retailers will come and go. Uh, the economy is going to go up and down. But one thing that is for sure is going to stay is 
premium location. There's nothing else about location that is more important in REITs. Now, what they do when they build new projects right now is they, they are building small villages. What means is that you have offices, office towers, multifamily, and then retail all around the same blocks. So it kind of creates a small ecosystem. Everybody is working there, living there, and at the same time buying stuff from retailers at, uh, that, that are nearby. So this is why I decided to buy those shares. It is obviously a speculative play. The stock is priced um, and they expect a dividend cut, which hasn't happened yet, even though in uh, their latest report, uh, you'll see numbers are not great, but at least they haven't cut their dividend. So let's dig into the numbers. Uh, what you see here is fund from operation as greatly down so we're talking 178 million versus 335 last year uh you can expect the reason why is mostly because well first last year they sold some properties so they had about 38 millions in uh, in funds from operation that was coming from those sales this didn't happen this year obviously and also rent collected that are not up to par so they did a good job for their offices, but only, they only collected 34% of their retail properties for rent over the last quarter. Management maintained and said, you know what, in July, numbers were a lot better, so which is kind of good. And they're looking at like a lot of uh, stores reopening, a lot of people coming back to offices. And, and most of the time what happened is even if um, the companies are asking your, their employees to uh, do their, uh, to, to work, work remotely, what is happening is that they're still paying rents. So overall, it's not too bad. And they ended the quarter with $6 billion in liquidity, um, $1.5 in cash in end. The rest of it is um, uh, money that is uh, not withdrawn from a line of credit or, or other possibilities. And obviously, Brookfield Asset Management is backing the entire business uh, right behind there. They have also options to refinance some of their properties because the um, the loan to value a ratio is not too high, so they have plenty of space in their in a, a plenty of equity on their properties. So I'm not worried about their liquidity right now. Um, to give you an idea, dividend paid is roughly 300. 20 330 million per quarter so when you think that they have 1.5 billion in cash it's not too bad and they have other ways to increase that liquidity at the same time so right now i'm not worried about the dividend payment obviously it's not going to increase this year and probably not in 2021 uh, i would not be surprised if there's a dividend cut in this case but it's already priced in the stock and speaking of which that is quite interesting and shows lots of confidence from management is Brookfield is offering you a tender offer. So what's a tender offer? Well, it's uh, basically just a public offer saying to the market, oh, we are buying back shares. Um, when they did the announcement, uh, shares were obviously trading on their 12 bucks. Uh, it brought back the stocks roughly around that, that amount and they want to buy 74, 74 million units at that price. So if you're good on calculation, it's almost $1 billion of share buyback. So obviously upon the announcement, shares went back up. Actually, I should say units, but anyway, you get the, the, the point. So the, the units price went back up close to 12 bucks or 15 bucks in Canadian dollars. And now a lot of investors have received that tender offer by either email or by mail, um, asking them if they want to sell their shares at that price. Uh, if you think the coronavirus will continue to affect the economy for the next two, three years, and then eventually force Brookfield property partners to cut down their dividend and sell some of their assets and go into deep trouble, then you might want to consider it. Uh, on my side, I think that the company has a long track record. They have went through several recessions in the past. They know what they're doing. They have 
uh, plenty of liquidity right now, so this is not a problem for me to hold and be patient. I'm fairly certain that the stock price will go back over 20 bucks. When that's the key, I don't know. Um, my guess is the economy is going to gradually recover. Obviously, it's not going to be a V shape. It's going to take time. Um, but a lot of retail, a uh, lot of retailers are going to open stores. And for those who don't and go bankrupt, well, you know what? For premium location, this is the only place that you want to open. Uh, so under other other companies, other stores, or other retailers are going to call Brookfield and ask uh, availability in those places. So personally, I'm keeping up my shares. I'm not gonna sell. I bought obviously the Canadian version, so I'm not gonna sell at 15 bucks. Um, it's actually pretty much the price I paid. So for me, it doesn't really make sense. I'm gonna keep cashing the dividend. The yield is over 10%. Um, it is raising a red flag about dividend cuts. I already told you about that. But I wanna make sure that I stress that point. Do not expect to live on that 10%. My guess is it's going to be cut at one point or another, but so far we're not there, so that's the good news. Uh, to continue your quest, to continue your journey, I would like to offer you a free workbook. The workbook that I've designed is to help you to build your portfolio and have a strong buying and selling strategy in place. This uh, strategy is the one that I'm using for my personal portfolio and it's completely free no strings attached you just download the workbooks like 30 pages and lots of questions to make you think about your st investing strategy and the point here is the clearer your investing strategy will be the easier it will be to navigate through trouble times. Um, when March happened, I actually just used the same strategy that I've discussed in that book. I looked at my portfolio, make small changes, didn't panic, everything was fine. I was, uh, I was happy with my assets, my holdings, and I just went through the, the storm without uh, panicking. But the point here is I didn't panic because I had a plan. Without a plan, without a strategy, you get lost in the woods and then you start screaming and running everywhere, right? So just get to the link description um, right there, get your free workbook, start working on your investing strategy, make sure that your portfolio is in place. The market has been quite generous with us with this V recovery for the market and not the economy. But if you felt uh, uncertain, if you felt anxious back in March, maybe it's the time to review your portfolio during summertime um, before another storm hits or any bad news hits the market. So you want to make sure that you're well prepared for that and that workbook will do it for you. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to put the like button and then some comments tell me what you think about brookfield have you bought some shares uh are you on the fence are you selling are you selling to that tender offer at 12 bucks uh, a unit let me know your thoughts i'm curious to know what you're going to do with your shares of brookfield property partners so until my next video stay invested